This is the U.S. Navy's largest aircraft carrier with more than 5,000 sailors on board. They live and work for months at a time in this city at sea. But daily life aboard this ship is not always peaceful. They regularly encounter enemy attacks and the most intense weather conditions. During their missions, they have to endure raging storms, gigantic waves, and violent shocks that shake the steel, resulting in enormous shocks. These forces can cause significant damage to the ship, and in some cases even lead to dangerous flooding. So how do U.S. Navy sailors prepare for massive shocks while on an aircraft carrier? Understanding the Aircraft Carrier As we know, aircraft carriers are the largest warships in the world that play a very essential role in projecting military power across the globe. These massive vessels are often deployed in hostile environments and face a range of different threats. Because of this, it comes as no surprise that the U.S. Navy has developed a bunch of sophisticated systems and procedures to help prepare them for the worst. But before we dive into these systems and procedures, it's crucial to understand how these vessels are built in the first place. To put things into perspective, aircraft carriers are essentially floating cities designed to house thousands of crew members and accommodate dozens of aircraft. So it's obvious that they're built to be shielded from violent waves and potential enemy attacks as well. For this reason, an aircraft carrier's hull, otherwise known as its main body, is constructed with reinforced steel plates measuring several inches thick. And each U.S. Navy aircraft carrier is composed of over 50,000 tons of steel. This not only serves as a strong structure for the vessel, but also highly effective protection against fire and battle damage. Now that we truly understand how resilient these ships are, let's talk about some threats that can put everything to the test. The Threats It goes without saying that a U.S. Navy aircraft carrier faces several different threats around the clock during the months out in the ocean. And as discussed earlier, a sophisticated set of systems and procedures are employed to not only prevent these threats, but also face them with minimal consequences. So what are these threats, and how are they dealt with? The most significant sources of threats come from enemy naval forces. In other words, enemy submarines, surface ships, and aircraft can all pose a danger to the aircraft carrier. In fact, they're often deployed in unison to launch coordinated attacks. Enemy submarines in particular are a major concern for the U.S. Navy as they are designed to operate stealthily and can remain undetected for extended periods of time. On top of this, these vessels can launch torpedoes and missiles from a considerably long distance, which can cause remarkable damage to the aircraft carrier and potentially incapacitate it. To make things worse, these stealthy submarines can also lay explosive mines in the carrier's path. This can potentially capsize the ship if enough of them explode. While these threats from enemy naval forces were certainly faced throughout history, there have been no instances of a U.S. Navy aircraft carrier being sunk or destroyed in combat since World War II. However, that goes without saying that there have been several notable examples of aircraft carriers being damaged by enemy action. For instance, in 2017, the USS John S. McCain, a guided missile destroyer, collided with a merchant vessel in the South China Sea. This caused significant harm to the ship, with physical damages worth over $100 million, injury of almost 50 sailors, and the very unfortunate death of 10 sailors. Now, of course, there are many other threats that are less significant, but certainly not to be overlooked. A prime example is weather. Severe weather conditions out in the ocean, such as typhoons, hurricanes, and high winds, all can pose a weighty risk to aircraft carriers. The ships could also experience rough terrain in the form of violent waves. Such threats simply prove the importance of prevention and preparation. A general quarters drill. This is where GQ drills come into play, otherwise known as general quarters drills. GQ drills are a very crucial part of the extensive training that U.S. Navy sailors are put through on a regular basis while on an aircraft carrier. These drills are designed to simulate emergency scenarios and help prepare the crew to respond quickly and effectively in the presence of potential threats. All said, a GQ drill is basically an intense series of events that simulates a very serious situation, and it's certainly taken as that. Now, let me ask you a question. 
What are the first few things you would do if you were in an emergency on board an aircraft carrier? Be sure to leave your ideas in the comments below. Anyway, you can imagine a GQ drill as different layers of systems and procedures stacked on top of one another. It's a course of action that every sailor on an aircraft carrier independently and codependently performs, meaning that there are teams involved also. Let's run through the GQ drill one step at a time. The very first thing that happens following a GQ announcement is that all sailors immediately rush to their respective general quarters stations. These stations are sometimes referred to as battle stations or action stations, and they're pre-assigned to the sailors on board. This might be in a gun mount, in the combat information center, a repair locker, battle dressing station, aircraft hangar, or an engineering space. At these stations, sailors begin preparing for an emergency situation by wearing their personal protective equipment, which includes helmets, gloves, and gas masks. The ship goes into lockdown mode, meaning that all points of entry are locked, including any hatches and doors. Amongst this, the damage controlman team, also known as a DC team, gets into position. The crewmen in the damage controlman rating are essentially the maintenance and repair specialists who can generally be subdivided into smaller teams in a GQ situation. For example, a set number of DCs are strictly responsible for assessing and repairing any damage to the ship that may occur. They must quickly identify the source of any damages and efficiently take steps to control or repair them. Likewise, a team of DCs is responsible for providing medical assistance to any sailor who may be injured during the GQ situation. These crewmen receive special medical training, which prepares them to handle a wide range of medical emergencies. This includes minor injuries and also fatal injuries. Another very important part of the damage controlman team is the crewmen who closely monitor any fires that may erupt during a GQ situation. They're essentially a team of firefighters on board an aircraft carrier that serves the sailors in the same way that a firefighter on land would. These hardworking men prevent the possibility of fire and stop it from spreading and causing severe damage to the ship. Bracing for shock. Once every sailor is correctly stationed and on high alert, which usually happens in under five minutes, the aircraft carrier is essentially prepared for the worst. If a fire breaks out, the DCs will be working on it. If someone's injured, well, the DCs will check them out. And if the ship has suffered some damage, the DCs will sort that out too. Along with that, the other sailors positioned in their general quarters stations are manning repair lockers, gun turrets, and closely monitoring the emergency situation. In short, they're well prepared for whatever comes their way. But what if the aircraft carrier is prone to a missile strike or maybe a collision? These events would undoubtedly produce huge shockwaves that can cause significant damage to personnel and equipment. So how do the U.S. Navy sailors prepare for such shocks? Well, it's to be noted that the U.S. Navy employs a range of defensive measures to prevent this from occurring in the first place. Hence, to mitigate the chances of a detrimental shockwave, U.S. Navy aircraft carriers are equipped with the most advanced radar and sensor systems, missile defense systems, and electronic warfare capabilities. All of this is coupled with the robust structure of an aircraft carrier that we discussed earlier, making it highly unlikely that the vessel or its occupants are faced with adversity. Despite this, it's crucial for U.S. Navy sailors to learn how to brace for shock. In fact, one of the most critical aspects of a GQ drill is learning how to do just that. So let me break it down for you. On board the ship, bracing for shock involves assuming a stable position to minimize the risk of injury. This is why sailors are trained to secure loose items, don protective gear, and assume a position that provides the greatest protection from a potential shock wave. One common method of bracing for shock is to assume the brace position, where sailors crouch down and position the body so that the head, neck, and spine are aligned and protected. In addition, sailors may also be instructed to hold on to a secure object, such as a railing or a piece of equipment, to provide additional stability. Shock Mitigation Systems In addition to this training, it may surprise you that every U.S. Navy aircraft carrier is equipped with something called a shock mitigation system. 
This system typically includes several different components such as shock absorbing materials and structural reinforcements. These components work together in unison to minimize the transfer of shock waves through the ship and protect both the ship's equipment and its occupants. Now, let's start by discussing the shock absorbing materials that are present all around the ship. One common material is a type of foam specially designed to compress under pressure. So when a shock wave hits the ship, it subsequently compresses and absorbs most of the energy. This significantly reduces the impact on the ship's structure and prevents damage as a result. Moving on, structural reinforcement is also a very important piece of this system. As we already know, aircraft carriers are as strong as they can get, and providing additional support by installing beams and solid plates just makes them simply indestructible. By taking all these systems and procedures into account, one could quite comfortably claim that a U.S. Navy aircraft carrier is both the safest and riskiest place in parallel. It's almost as if the carrier is a small version of the larger world, with the potential for both safety and danger existing side by side. On one hand, the carrier is equipped with advanced technologies and highly trained personnel who are prepared to respond to a range of potential threats. On the other hand, the carrier is constantly exposed to risks, both from external threats and from the inherent dangers of operating such a complex piece of machinery in a dynamic and unpredictable environment. Despite these risks, the U.S. Navy continues to invest in advanced technologies and training to ensure that its aircraft carriers remain prepared to face any potential threats they may encounter. By taking a comprehensive approach to safety and security, the U.S. Navy is able to minimize the risks associated with operating such a complex vessel while maximizing the safety and effectiveness of its crew. What do you think is the most challenging aspect of the GQ drill? Is it the tense situation or the risks involved? Be sure to share your thoughts and join a healthy discussion in the comments below. If you enjoyed what you saw and learned something new, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more fascinating content about the US Navy. We appreciate your support and hope to see you again soon. Be sure to hit the bell icon so you can tune in to our next video right on time. Bye for now.